Hey, welcome to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon. My name is Mondo Fresco and today I am joined by <laughs> actor, model, musician. This dude does it all. Something Rome, like Flynn, Rome. What's up, man? How are you? What's happening, man? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with you, man. I'm excited that you made it out. Uh, fan of your work. Thank you. And, and your craft. Uh, much respect, you know, to, to your craft and, and, and mm -hmm. what you're doing. The music and, and of course, you know, the acting side. Uh -huh. So before we go into any of that, man, uh -huh. I want to know uh, what was before you auditioned for the first time, before you sang in front of a microphone or in front of people, what was it that that made you fall in love with with entertainment? Um, that's a great question. I think I'm from a big family, so there is seven of, I'm one of I'm one of eight, right? And that's just the brothers and sisters that I have that grew up in the house with us. Yeah. So my dad has other kids that didn't grow up in the house with me. Um, not that I don't count them, but yeah. <laughs> they still my brothers. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Still love y'all. But um, you know, I, I generally just say, yeah, you know, I'm one of eight. So when you're in a big family, like you, you got to figure out how to stand out. Yeah. Um, a lot of people I feel like grow up and they have a good core group of friends that they go to school with. Um, I really never had any interest in developing that or having that aside from like being on the basketball team because I just had a big family. I had enough people around already. Yeah. And I think everybody kind of had their thing, you know, in my family, you know, I have a brother who's in Asia right now. Um, Steve, I don't, I don't know if he'll still be out there when this airs, but he's hooping out there. He plays professionally. Nice. And so everybody has something they were good at. And I just think, it was always a competition about who could hold the attention, you know, even as just a little kid who could eat their food fastest, you know, I was yeah. always, always ate my food too fast. I still do that now. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure I savor it a little bit now when I'm <laughs> eating, but you know, always been a competition with my family, man, my brothers and sisters. So I started doing voices and, you know, impressions at a super young age. Um, having a big family, you always have people over. Like my mom always had people over from the neighborhood yeah, and, you know, aunts and uncles and all of those cousins, everybody would always be at my mom's crib because she cooks. And so, you know, it started out with, you know, just doing impressions and doing different accents. And, you know, my mom would just call me in the room like, you know, come do that, uh, do that accent you were doing earlier, you know. And then it was fun, but then it became like, like, damn, I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what I mean? I'm yeah. like, she, she was just like. You know, like, if your mom ever talked to you with her mouth, she do that to you. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, know you got to do something. You know, something. you got to, you, know, <laughs> like, you know. But she really pushed me to just lean into it, yeah. I think. And then as I got older, um, I kind of stopped doing that. And it kind of laid dormant inside me, I think. And I started doing music um, around, I think, like 18, 19 years old. Started learning how to play guitar. Taught myself how to play. Um, I worked at a pawn shop at the time where I was living at Illinois. And I worked with a lot of people who were in a band together and they were in a rock band. I was the only guy who didn't play an instrument. So we had a bunch of instruments in the pawn shop. So I would just sit in the back and play the guitar while they played and practiced the music that they were doing. And then over time they were like, man, you want to, you want to come with us to, to, you know, to our practices. Cause they would have a practice after, after we'd work sometimes. And the lead singer didn't like to go to practice. You know, he, he just only liked to do the shows. It's like, man, we need somebody to sing these songs. And I'm just like, Damn, okay, what songs are we singing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm singing like Metallica, like uh, Three Doors Down, you know, uh, nice. those kind of songs, uh, which I didn't grow up on listening to, but I just fell in love with over time. Yeah. Uh, you know, going to practice with those guys. And, 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 and that's where I felt like I found my love for, for music and just creativeness. Uh, at that point and so it just kind of built from there i think acting came way later you know i was doing music way before that you know <laughs> and somewhere out there's a cd i used to go around peoria illinois pack, go to the barber shops and pass out my cd i used to have a bunch of songs on there so somebody out there got some music nice. that nobody's heard probably and before i moved out to la i went online because i had a bunch of stuff on there and i just scrubbed everything um just because i felt like I needed to approach being in LA uh, with a clean slate. And at that time, there, there were even less opportunities for people of color mm. to, to be in 
films and, and, and shows and stuff like that. So I didn't want to give myself any reason not to get something. And at the time I had tattoos also, I had these, but I had different ones. So these, these are cover-ups. Okay. And so I would always, you know, wear a long sleeve because I didn't want to give anybody a reason to be like, oh, we can't book that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has tattoos. Oh, you he heard his music. Like he's saying some crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just tried to be like, you know, plain Jane as possible as when I got here. And from there, I always said to myself, like acting was just kind of a conduit for me to do music. It, it just it just took off, you know, something that I was able to make a living from and build some, you know, validation uh, yeah. as an artist, but as an actor. And they, they really just kind of coexist anyway, yeah. you know. Yeah. So uh, it's always been my goal to, to do both, you know, fully. Um, but I, I love them both equally. So music was sort of like your, your first love, right? Basketball was my first love. Basketball. For sure, yeah. Basketball. I mean, I didn't know anything about, you know, guitars or where I, where I was from, it, was, it wasn't super cool to, to play guitar, you know, it wasn't cool to sing. When I yeah. was singing, I was in high school, I was singing, you know, everybody thought that was crazy. They was like, that's weird, you know? <laughs> I was on the basketball team, yeah. I was singing, I was doing a bunch of stuff. Everybody was like looking at me like, you know, um, but that, that's just like, culturally and also um the the idea of masculinity yep. at the time you know which is still prominent in, sure. in, in places like that where i came from it, it wasn't about talent it was just about the man needed to be strong you know and mm -hmm. needed to provide and and do manly type type things and singing yeah. just wasn't one of those things you know yeah at the time when you think about like pop culture and and athletes that have done music like you think rappers, like there's been a lot of basketball athletes that have gone into to mm -hmm. rapping and um, not a lot of singers. Nah, not a lot of singers. Although I think Victor Oladipo can sing. Do you know that? Oh yeah? I didn't know that. I don't know if he has music out, but I'm, I heard he can sing. Like karaoke singing or no, sing I sing? sing? I think he can sing, yeah. Oh, I'm, dope. I'm hearing, I'm hearing he can actually sing. Dope, dope. Yeah, no, I, I you know, I think there's, I mean, there's a lot of things that, that we have to normalize, you know, and, and, yeah. um, you know, black and brown cultures. And, and, um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a sticky thing because I do think in other cultures, it's, it's, it's a lot more accepted. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of actors that do music, um, like uh, my white counterpart actors who also do music, who also act, and they get to kind of live seamlessly. And I just think, Culturally, at times, like we tend to box like our 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 um, artists in. We, we mm -hmm. tend to like keep them in one place. Yeah. And I don't I don't know I wouldn't know the reason behind that, but there's something behind it because I've always tend to feel like once you kind of establish yourself as one thing, like people want to keep you in that space, you know. And as a creative, it's the most frustrating thing to be misunderstood and to to not be received, you know, until you reach a point where you're like, I don't even care anymore when anybody thinks and you just do it. Yeah. And then when you don't care, then that's when people start to, oh, okay, you don't care? Okay, now we appreciate what you're doing. Yeah, I, I feel like especially your, your higher ups, whether, you know, it's a, 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 you're a boss, it could be yeah. a boss or a manager or, you know, they see you and they're like, Cause this happened to me like no you know i started in radio and then mm -hmm. i wanted to, to go into tv hosting yeah and they're like you know stick to one thing and i'm like stick to one thing like i love like i my, my i first started to dj when i was 14 years old so i was like djing mm -hmm. then i started uh behind the microphone and then i wanted to do like in front of a camera but they were like just, just stick to radio stick to one thing and yeah. it's it's kind of heartbreaking as a creative to mm. to hear that, but we we, we got to do it anyway. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to push through it. I mean, it essentially, it's it's easier said than done, you yeah. know, because I think naturally we're just affected by our peers. We're affected by how people receive us. For sure. And as much as we don't want to care, you know, we, we just do. And I think it, it's in our genetic makeup, you know, to to care is because you care about what you're doing and you want people to receive it the way you want them to see it. Yeah. And a lot of times it's less about you being talented. It's just more about, I say like herd mentality, 
because there's a lot of herd mentality these days, especially with social media. Yep. Um, you'll see something start to trend or uh, be popular on, on Twitter or something. And uh, whether it's an artist about them saying the artist isn't good, a lot of times people haven't even heard the music. You mm -hmm. know, they're just following the herd mentality. And so we have it the other way too, you know, where yeah. it's artists where they're maybe not so good. Maybe they don't deserve the praise again, but because of like, where things are going as far as social media, like people will just latch on to whatever's popular. Yep. And a lot of times people don't individually think for themselves. They'll just, if they see enough people agree on one thing, they'll just agree with that. And you know, it, it makes sense because yeah. I think people in general, there's like two types of people, the people that are, that think for themselves, but also people that, that don't have an original idea or thought. And so, they see people tweet about a certain thing and they go, oh yeah, that's cool. And then they tweet about it and they get a little adulation from that or acknowledgement and some they feed off that. Mm -hmm. And so they just, they just keep going, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's not that, yeah. You know, and so all of a sudden they've become, they don't even know how they got there. They haven't heard a single record, yeah. but all of a sudden they have an opinion. Um, and and that, that, that supersedes everything, not even just music, but like politics, you know, every, every aspect of, of our life. Yeah. You know, we tend to kind of, or I think in general, people don't do the necessary, you know, research to have an educated opinion on anything. Because now you don't really, you don't really have to. I mean, you got TikToks that are six seconds, five seconds less that are giving you information that may or may not be true. Right. Depending on how you receive the, the message or what the format is, you'll just take it to be true, depending on who's saying it. And so it's, it's just one of those things where I think if people start to think individually, or, or have their own deductive reasoning, um, we'll, we'll kind of figure out what's good and, and what's bad in society, period. When do you feel that you, I'm not gonna, I hate to say woke, but like when do you <laughs> feel like you, you were aware and were thinking outside of the box? Like at what age do you think that that was for you? Um, I think it, it only became relevant when I felt like it was my responsibility to know when I, because early on, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in the world that don't directly affect us. Yeah. Um, and as a kid and as a young adult, like we're more concerned with our immediate, you know, issues, immediate priorities that we have to deal with, whether it's rent, you know, family stuff, those things will always kind of be main priority. But when people look to you as leader and they look to you to have a voice, um, you can either be a person that has done the research and has at least, you know, done your due diligence to have an opinion, or you can be the people that, that don't do that and you put misinformation out. And I just feel like as, as a creative and also as a, as a, as a leader in my community, like yeah. it's, it's on me to make sure I know what I'm talking about. For sure. You know, because if I, if I miss up and I say something wrong, you know, the media or people who oppose what I'm saying, it's very easy for them to be like, isn't that the, your guy? Like he was wrong. <laughs> and it's all it takes, you know, and all, all of a sudden the whole community is discredited because yeah. you didn't do the necessary research to understand what you're talking about. And so I'm always very, you know, um, technical about that. Cause I want to make sure I at least know the information to, to make my own judgment on things. And, you know, over the years, there's been situations where I've needed to know, like, how do I feel about certain things and, and, and how does this affect me? You know, even if it doesn't affect me individually, I have a lot of fans and people out there that do care about this. Yeah. So let me make sure I know what I'm talking about so that I can at least inform people um, from my perspective what's going on. Yeah, man, that's smart. Like, and I, I, I want to say that not many people or most don't think like that. Like people that are in the public figure. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous, <laughs> you know. It's <laughs> dangerous because, I mean, there's a lot of different, you know, a lot of different uh, entities at work, you know? Right, right. And so it's very easy to offend, you know, yep. somebody depending on what side you pick. So it's easy to just pick one side or pick no side yep. and just have a smile and, and hope it blows over. Yep. But that's just not in my nature. Um, I've never been somebody that's been codependent on, on any single person. Yeah. Like there isn't anybody that I've worked with in my career that I felt like, you know, uh, okay, well, that person I need to make sure I don't say anything about because they could, you know, derail my career. Like, I always built my career based on 
the hard work that I put into it. Yeah. Like nobody gave me a handout. Nobody said, you know, hey, come on, like I'm gonna put you in these, these things, even though you don't deserve it. Everything that I've put effort into, I've worked hard to get, you know. And I think that you know, integrity matters. I think you know, as as an artist, that's our responsibility to to have yeah. some of that, depending on what you do. When you kind of when you so you, basketball music. Mm -hmm. And then you got into acting. Was that something that people were just telling you to, to get into because you had like a, a look or was it something that that came from you? Um, you know, I, I had no recollection of of acting. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm a, I was aware of it. Right. But as a kid, I didn't watch movies thinking that guy's a great actor. I thought, damn, that was a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's Batman. You know what I mean? Okay, <laughs> cool. I like Spider-Man. That was a good movie. And until. And so, I got introduced to acting. I started to kind of understand like the the magic behind it, and and I really fell in love with it at that point. You know, I was I was living in Illinois at the time, and, and I did like an arts program, and it was it was really on a dare. Like I was with one of my friends, and he just dared me to. We heard someone on the radio, and he was just like, "Yo, you should do that." It was one of those cat calls, you know, where it's like, "Come on out if you know how to sing," or it, basically anything art related. We want you to come. Yeah. And give us your money, yeah. And so <laughs> I said, "Yeah, cool. Why not?" I never expected anything to come from it, uh, but when I did it, it was just something natural about it uh, that I felt from doing it. And I ended up going to Orlando and doing a showcase there, and really meeting the right people that not necessarily pushed my career, but just helped me see that it was a possibility, you know. And I ended up just moving out to LA. I drove here, drove to LA with a friend of mine. You know, I, I had no money, had a bag of clothes. From Orlando you drove? No, from, from Chicago. From Chicago. After I got back from Orlando, yeah, I kind of skipped some stuff. <laughs> After I got back from <laughs> Orlando, uh, prior to that, you know, I had been working out with a team and earned a scholarship to play, you know, right. and I had been through a lot to get there, you know, because I, I wasn't like a top recruit in high school because I ended up hurting myself. Uh, right before my senior year. So it was one of those things where I, I just was so determined to to go to college and hoop. And that was something that I always wanted. That was my first, you know, dream, I guess. Yeah. The love of basketball. That's what I wanted to do. And uh, after high school, I, I just started walking on, you know, going to practices that I really wasn't invited to. <laughs> and then hooping with guys. And then the coach eventually was like, you know, who are you? Like, who do you know here? And I'm just like, not anybody, really. And so I kind of worked my way up to earning a scholarship to be able to play. Wow. And we ended up having a good relationship, me and the coach. Um, and it was the only thing I was like, man, I'm doing it. You know, something I always wanted to do. And then acting happened. You know, and then I went to Orlando. I came back. And at this point, I had already signed my letter of intent to play. And I was basically at a crossroads where I had to decide if I was going to pursue arts or acting or was I going to go to college. And yeah you know, do basketball. And uh, after I got back, it was it was clear to me which one I needed to do, which was which was pursue acting. Um, That's tough. It was just something about it that I that I just couldn't let go of. And it wasn't like I knew I was going to be successful or anything. It was like. Once, you know, you, you just know, I think undeniably, yeah. you know, and it, there was nothing I could do to get in the way of it, you know. So at that point, I just had to tell the coach, which sounds like an easy thing to do. You know, but that was probably one of the hardest things to do before I left because he he really believed in me and gave me a chance. And uh, it was right before the season. I was just like, man, what do I tell this dude? <laughs> we have been building up chemistry and talking about the season. And um, but he knew you were acting. Nah, or no, no, I wasn't no. acting. I wasn't doing anything at that time. I mean, I was working at a pawn shop. That's what I was doing. <laughs> you know, and I was driving back and forth to Chicago to go to my auditions. And no one really knew about that besides my my manager that worked at the pawn shop who just happened to be like a theater like geek. And that's the only reason he really wanted me to do it. He allowed me to go because any other boss wouldn't be like, it would be like, no, you can't just leave work, go yeah, to Chicago. Yeah, yeah. You know, we need you to work, you know? And I would do that consistently and he would always let me go. So, you know, shout out to him. I haven't talked to him in a while, but I, I just wouldn't have been able to do it if he didn't let me. Um, but he didn't know anything about that. He just knew that I wanted to hoop. That's all they, he knew me up, yeah. you know? So I ended up talking to him, calling him on the phone. After I got back, I made my decision. And uh, 
I thought to myself, like, man, don't really tell this guy I'm about to go to, I want to go to LA to pursue acting. And I said, nah, that sounds real crazy. That sounds like I've I seen a ghost, you know? I'm like, nah, I don't sound real. So I said, um, hey, man, listen, uh, I don't really have a place to live right now. I got to move to Wisconsin, which is where my family was living at the time in Madison, which is partially true. You know, I really didn't have a place to live at the time, but I, I was going to figure it out if I needed to. And he was like, no, don't worry about it. I'm going to put you in the crib with a bunch of other players and don't worry about the rent. I'm just like, oh, man. Yeah, how do I get out of this? Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, and the, the next thing I knew that he couldn't top, you know, which I felt bad about right after saying, I'm like, man, you know, my mom's sick, man. I got to take care of her. He was like, dang. Well, <laughs> you know, can't do anything about that. And he's just like, if you ever want to play, man, you can always come back. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, damn. So at that point, I got over that hurdle. But the next thing I had to do was send an email to, to the president of my class in order for them to release me from my scholarship because they had received the money. Uh, I was going to have to pay for classes that I was enrolled in. Mm. And I was like, there's no way. I can't afford that. Like, I won't be able to, to save money to go to L.A. or whatever. So I can't find this email for the life of me. But I did send him a long, lengthy email. And I just told him, like, listen, I'm about to go to L.A. I think I'm about to be an actor. I'm about to be something great. And, you know, I'm summarizing, but I, I gave him that. And he just said, I don't know why, I believe you. And then he just allowed me to get out of my classes without having to pay for anything. Wow. And at that point, I was like, okay, now there's really not a hurdle in front of me to get there. Besides, I didn't have no money. <laughs> and so I was still working. It took me like a year to go to get make my way out to LA after right. that point. Um, but at the same time, I was still going back and forth to Chicago and auditioning and, and um, at least getting that kind of experience. But um, at that point, it just felt like a weight off my back. But at the same time, I was like, man, this is the only thing I ever wanted was to hoop. Yeah. And to not have that opportunity. And it, it, it was tough to walk away from. But quick side note, it's just crazy how sometimes the universe will allow you to step back into things you didn't think you'd have the opportunity to do again. Most recently, um, I, there was a coach that my, my brother played for a team here in LA or a little bit outside of LA. And uh, I would play with him a lot. You know, that's really, I, I loved hooping, but I loved playing with him because I wanted to help him get better. Yeah. And I trained with him. You know, it's just something like when you, when you do something with your brother, like they just, it's just different. You it know, and so I, I, I trained with him, I worked out with him. Um, I hooped with him. I did everything with him to kind of help him get prepared to go play. And, you know, the coach saw me hooping. He was like, man, you have any eligibility left? I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, I didn't go to go to college. He was like, you should come play. I'm like, where? He's like, you should come play. Yeah, this year. I mean, I didn't think he was serious, but then he kept following up. And I was like, okay, what do I have to do? And he was just like, you know, send me your transcripts. I'm like, transcripts? I mean, like 10 years ago. I don't know how to get a hold of that. <laughs> and, uh, He's like, no, no, don't worry about it. Send me a link. And, you know, a couple of days later, I ended up joining the team. You know, here I am, like, playing with a bunch of guys who are a little bit younger than me. But I got to, I got to do something that I really wanted to do since I was a kid, you know, since, since being really young, which was play, you know, college basketball. Yeah. Which is what I did. You know, I, I had a game. I had a couple of games. I played, like, seven or eight games. <clears throat> and we weren't very good. You know, I love those guys, but we weren't very good. Because uh, if we were good, I probably wouldn't be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, he gave me the opportunity to live out one of my dreams, man. And, you know, I always thank him for that. And I just had my last game, I think, probably like a week ago, two weeks ago. That's awesome. And I'm filming. At the same time, I'm like filming. I'm like, yo, I can't make it to practice. I'm going to set. He's like, all right, don't worry about it. He like, allowed me not to yeah, yeah, yeah. practice. But I had to earn a trust through the guys that I was hooping with, though, too. Because they, they had been there the whole season. It's like, who is this guy? This actor just you know, trying to take our minutes. And yeah. So, Did they know you? you I mean, they, they knew who I was. Yeah. yeah. They knew from stuff I had done. Yeah. And just hooping around LA, they knew me because of that too. But they were just like, yo, what are you doing here? Like, <laughs> but, you know, very quickly it became less about that, you know, hey, because yeah. I put the work in, you know, I would show up to practice whenever I could and I earned everything. You know, I didn't start until a couple of weeks in because I had to earn my spot. I had to learn the plays and I did everything that I had to do to, in order to, to be in that position, you know, but it was one of those things like, it's crazy how life can do that, man. Like almost 10 years later, I'm in a position where I'm in college, you know, I'm playing basketball. 
That's a know? beautiful thing, man. Yeah. Especially when it's it's like you were saying, it's your first love. Yeah. It's your first love and it's something that you always have love for. Like I still hoop, man. I mean, yeah. right now I'm I'm training cuz I got to prepare for something that I'm about to shoot, but it's something I'm still doing. You yeah. know, I'm still hooping. I hooped a couple days ago, you know, yeah. com- competitively. You know, and yeah. I had the opportunity like um before the season started, uh one of the coaches that my my brother was training with, uh, his name's Alex Basil. He trains like Kyrie and Melo and all those guys. Yeah. And he hit me one day and he's like, "Yo, you free tomorrow?" I'm like, he like, I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, Got a couple of guys, you know, pro guys that are hooping, and he just casually, yeah, you know, Kyrie, Mello, Karis LeBert, um, you want to hoop? I'm like, duh. <laughs> I don't care what the hell I have to do tomorrow. I was going to be there. And so I pulled up, and I got to play. You know, got to play with these guys on the same That's team. That's crazy. You know, me and Mello was on the same team. It was just, like, super surreal. Still to this day, like, one of the biggest, like, I've won I've won awards, you know, for acting, and I've done a lot of things. Congrats, but doing by that, the way. Thank yeah. you, yeah. But doing that, like... I, I don't know. It's just one of those top memories that special. I have. It's, it was super special because I used yeah. to wear the Nuggets jersey with Melo. I got to tell him, like, man, you're one of my favorite players ever, you know, and I got to play with him and, and you know, hear what it sounds like when he grabs a rebound. And he's like, got the way. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know, but was it, it hoodie Melo, though? It, or was I mean, it just without, it, a, no, without a hoodie? No, hoodie that's, that's, that's legendary. You know, I didn't get to play hoodie Melo, but I got to guard Kyrie. You know, that's like, how many crazy. people can say that? That it's not an NBA. Yeah. You know, so... After I left that day, I was like, can't nobody tell me nothing, man. Yeah. Any court I'm going to, I'm shooting full, I'm shooting from half court. You know? And then <laughs> I'm the showing logo. the picture. I'm showing the picture of me and Kyrie. This is why. You know? Rome but, from the logo. From the logo. Yeah, that's it. I only shoot from there now. It's like, you know. <laughs> that's 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 so dope, man. I um I got a chance to I'm I'm a soccer, I'm a big soccer fan. I grew up playing soccer. So. There's been some opportunities where I got to play with like, you know, some professional yeah. soccer players that I like watched growing up. And it's 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 special, man. Mm-hmm. And it's different. Like I've been in the entertainment industry since I was 18 years old. And whenever I run into whether, you know, any celebrity, it's 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 just what I do. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's not it's no biggie. Right. When I run into a soccer player. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I was at I was at the mall once, and I saw the soccer player just like walking through. He was by himself, and I was like, I was like, yo, I was by myself too, but I was like geeking out. Yeah, right, right, yeah. It hits different. It hits different just because uh, of the love that you have for the sport. It was it was super gratifying, man, and not to just beat it. I would have been happy just watching him, but I got to actually play. Yeah, you know, we won some games. We ended up losing some games, but it it was just, you know, to get to, to get a high five from Melo and or, or hear him say it. That's tough, you know. Hey, go to work. You know, those things like, you know, I hear that when I'm hooping, but yeah. never from him, you know. Yeah. And it, it was just one of those moments, like, I just realized, like, man, I always tell people this, you know, the world is your playground, man. You gotta have fun with it. Like, whatever it is you wanna do, you you can literally do. I'm 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 proof of that. Yeah. You know, I I don't yeah. think I've set out something that I wanted to do that I haven't accomplished, to be real. That's beautiful. And I have some really crazy goals, you know. To, to think at a young age, like I, I used to write out my goals and uh, before I'd ever step foot on a, on a set, um, you know, when I first moved out to LA, I was working at a, a bunch of places. I was working at Macy's, I was working at P.F. Chang's at the same time. And I got fired from those simultaneously. It was almost like, this wasn't a sign, like, I don't know what the hell is, you know? So I got fired from both of those jobs. Oh, wait, how do you get fired for, for that? <laughs> well, <laughs> from those places? At was, the same time. I was working at, at, at Burbank. It was, they had the mall out there. Yeah. And um, I would go to work at P of Chang's. And, and when I would get off there, I would go to Macy's. Oh, okay. And okay. I, would, I wouldn't even have time to change. Like, I had like 30 minutes. I'd change in between. <clears throat> and there was one particular day I went, I was working at uh, P of Chang's. And there was a couple of actors that, I, that were, you know, either waitress or they were host or whatever, right? And I was late to work this particular day. And the manager pulled me into the, the office and he said, you know, we got to let you go. I was just like, I was so surprised. I mean, for one, I had rent coming up. That's the first thing I thought about. <laughs> I'm like, right now, I mean, can you wait like two weeks? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he said, man, you know, we got to let you go. And I'm like, why? And he's like, you were a bit late today. And, you know, the girl that was, you were coming to relieve her position, she was late to her audition and that could have been her big break. And I was just like, what? Like, 
because of that. And I said, look, I'll do whatever. Like, I'll go apologize to her. I go, because people at my job, they, they loved me, you know, and I was, they really like working with me. And I, I was like, I'll go say sorry to everybody. You know, I needed to keep this job. I was like, man, I need to pay my rent. And he said, you know what? Give me a second. And so he had me sit outside the office and I'm outside the office, which is glass, by the way, I can see him. <laughs> and he, he's in there and another manager goes in and then they're talking and they're looking as they're talking and they're looking at me. And I'm just like, man, looking at them. I'm like, all right, man, I think I may have dodged the bullet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go in and he's like, okay, um, we're still going to have to let you go. <laughs> I was high as hell, man. I'm like, my face went from being sad to being like, come you know, on. Y'all for real? <laughs> yeah. You made me sit outside like that. I said, man, give me my, give me my little hundred dollars I got from working these couple days. <laughs> and I ended up leaving there. And I had to work at Macy's the same day. <laughs> I, I, I kid you, it was crazy. <laughs> I used to work at the young, um, I think it's called the young men's department okay. um, for Macy's, right? Yeah. And I had one particular customer that came in there that was just, he just wanted smoke. I, I, I was chilling, like I'm always super <laughs> chill, but he just wanted smoke, man. He like, he, he asked about a size for some pants and I was trying to find them. And he was just so irritated, like, why can't you find, like, I was like, man, it ain't here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said something to me like you need to learn how to do your job and I was just like you, you need to learn how to find your own damn pair of jeans <laughs> you know I said something <laughs> like that and he just like went off like you can't talk to me like that I'm a customer and all of this and then my boss came and sat me down he's like look we gotta spend you for a couple days I'm like suspend me he's like yeah we'll have you come back you'll have to re-interview at that point I just said man you know what no I'm not going through all that yeah. I left there I walked around Burbank for a little bit. I was just like, what the hell is going on? Walked into a, um, a California kitchen, yep. applied real quick. And they said, yeah, you know, our position is kind of full, but you can still fill the app out. And I was like, all right, man. And I was just doing that all around Burbank. People were going to say the same thing. I went home and I sat on my mattress. I didn't really have a, a bed. I had like a mattress. I was just like, man, you know what? I'm done with it. Like, I'm never working for anybody ever again. Like, Man. I don't care if I'm homeless. I don't care if I don't have nothing. Like, I'm not doing that anymore. Wow. And so, at that point, I never did it again. And actually, there was one point I did. I'll get to that <laughs> if I can. <laughs> but after I, after I did that, I would write down my goals. I started writing down them in very specific detail yeah. about what I wanted. You know, it was from the smallest things to the biggest things. Like, I just wanted to pay my phone bill on time this month that was like one of my goals at, at a certain point and the other one was like win an Emmy you know or be a lead in a movie or be a lead in a series wow you know and I was very detailed about those kind of things and I before bed I would just um read them out loud you know it was just really fresh on my mind as I went to sleep and I wouldn't just like read them I, I would always say I will you know I would just declare it like like it was just a matter of fact and I did that for a long time and I started to have a dream. I started to have the same dream over and over again um, of me. Like it, it was like a, a third person view of me. Wow. So it's me walking, but it was like a pixelated version of me. It wasn't like clear. It, 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 lo it almost looked like um, like a Roblox game or something. Mm. <clears throat> it wasn't like super clear. I couldn't even make out my features. I just saw that I had a, I was smiling. Right. And I was walking through and like people were talking to me and I walked straight onto a stage and I, and I held up an award and then that was it. Wow. Like I kept having that same dream over and over again. And I understood it, but at the same time, it just didn't make sense. Cause at that point, like I hadn't even been on a set before, you know what I'm saying? I hadn't even done anything. So I was just like, how the hell am I get there from, from where I am now? You know? Yeah. And later down the line that ended up happening. Um, but as I noticed, like things slowly just started to check off the page you know i started to cross out the stuff that i had written down that i wanted to do um and it's just like one of those things like i wasn't afraid of failing at that point i was just afraid of like what the hell am i getting myself into next because i knew like whatever i wanted i could have i just didn't know in myself if i was ready you know it's like i could write down be an astronaut then next week i'd be an astronaut I'd be like how the hell did i get in this position you know <laughs> it's like i don't know where that notebook at but i gotta find yeah. it it's, it's um, the law of attraction, man. It's, it's real. It's, it's real. And I didn't even know I was doing that at the time. Um, I didn't, no one ever told me. No one ever said, do that. 
I think it was just like a coping mechanism to have some sort of structure and control in my life where I really didn't have, didn't have that, you know, I didn't know where I was getting my rent from or when I was going to eat, you know, I didn't, you know, it was, it was tough, but it, it didn't feel like it was tough because I was chasing something and I had been doing it the other way before where I wasn't chasing a dream and just living barely check to check kind of situation. Yeah. And without a purpose, that's, that's, that's like daunting. That's like a mental prison. And I'd much, much rather be failing going towards something I'm trying to achieve, you know, rather than not even going towards anything, but still failing, you know, yeah. and still not having a purpose. Um, and over time, I just built up that, that kind of, you know, connection with the universe and, and with, with God to, to know what I wanted, but to be very specific about it. You know, I wouldn't just be like, man, I hope I get a bag of chips today. You know, it's like I, I, I knew that what I was saying was that, that held a lot of weight and right. levity to it. So I knew whatever I asked for, I was going to get. And I do think that there's a cause and reaction to everything. So there was sacrifice that had to go along with those things because they don't come free. You right. know, success is always paired with sacrifice. You don't get one without the other. One thousand percent. And if you don't you don't think that you're sacrificing, you already did. You don't even know. The only thing is I knew what I wanted to sacrifice and I knew what I wanted to get. So it was just about how do I go about feeling, understanding what I wanted to let go of and what I wanted to, to have. And that, that's kind of been my system ever since then. What would you say is, is your biggest secret to finding success? Um, well, I mean, success is, is objective, you know, depending on what you want. Like some people's success is just making it to work because they don't have a car like oh, success today yeah you know and so depending on how far you want to reach you know you can reach success but i always say like with success comes expectation you know and with expectation there's always room for letdowns mm. you know without expectation you'll fly any direction you know you'll, you'll never really reach a certain point of what you're trying to accomplish but You'll, you'll never really fall back. You'll never really fall forward. You'll kind of be in this limbo space. But you need expectation, you know, and you don't get failure without success. It comes hand in hand. But I genuinely think that if you have something you love doing, like purpose wise, you'll fail your way into it. Like there's it's just one of those things where you, you, you wouldn't be able to get in your own way if you wanted to. Like yeah. that's how you got to think about it. Like you got to think about every step or move you make is toward that thing that you want and it will be. And people always like, I've had somebody ask me the other day, like they were at a crossroads. They didn't know what to pick between these two things. And I said, whatever you decide is the right, the right answer. Right. You'll never know what the other answer would be or what, what's going to happen. You know, every choice you've made has been the right one. You know what I'm saying? And, and you end up exactly where you're supposed to be every time. Like, it's 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 inevitable. So if you if you think of it that way, the idea of failing and the idea of like coming up short, although there is shortcomings and expectation and it does hurt when you don't get the things you want, you still end up where you are. It's just that people we we forget <laughs> the situations where we've been down and, and, and didn't have to our, our rent paid and you know, we forget about those things, but we remember, you know, when we do have it, we have it. We don't even remember when we didn't, you know. Yeah. So it's good to kind of remind yourself, but success is just a state of mind. I mean, it, you'll, you'll continue to exceed, you know, succeed as long as you don't quit. Right. Quitting is the ultimate equalizer. That's the only thing that can ever make sure that you fail is if you just stop. And if you don't stop, like there ain't no failure in it. You know, if you continue to go. What's your secret to finding happiness? Well, happiness is not a, a sustainable thing. I think that humans in general we've attached this idea that we need to maintain a sense of happiness like all the time yeah it's just not real it's just not a real thing i mean it's just about finding these pockets of happiness that you can call yours right you know and for some people that's that's having a wife and kids and they go to work and it's tough for them and they go home and that's you know that's their happiness you you have to figure out these sort of pockets of happiness that that give you this and something for you to work towards, you know, but sustaining happiness is not a real thing. You, we're actually not meant to, to, to be that, you know Dude, I was just talking about that. Just we're like not meant a couple to sustain days happiness. It's not, it's a man-made thing. It's a fairy tale. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, 
you go through ups and downs. Like you just have to accept that when things come your way, that things will even out as they tend to do. Yeah. You know, and I, I'm I'm like a firm believer of that. Like, I won't say. I mean, as a creative, I think success and happiness they sometimes don't coexist. Mm. You know, you can be super successful and still be very unhappy. Um, but when you are somebody who is chasing something, that feeling of what you're chasing, it never really goes away. Yeah. And so when people say like, you made it, like you never really make it. I hope I never make it. You know, yeah. I don't want to make it. There isn't really a finish line for me. Like, yeah. I've always had goals of things that I wanted to do, but I'm, I've reached those things. And then when I look up, there's something else right in front of me. Like, well, now I got to go get that now. Yep. And so you, you just yep. continue to go. And it's, it's, it's really this endless pursuit. And, and it can be a daunting experience when it's not going well. But when things are great, you know, the highs are really high. Yep. But when it's low, you know, it's, it's really low and nobody seems to understand. And, you know, you're in this depression state yeah. and you don't know how to get out of it. And the only thing you know how to cope with it is success and the idea of accomplishing things. And so that's the unhealthy part of it. Uh, but as a as a creative, like we kind of need that to thrive, I think, in order to keep pushing through. And I think that's why our, most of our really talented creators seem to be very flawed. I think there's a connective tissue between the greats. Like if you look at our greats, they come from backgrounds that are that are less than structured. You know, yeah. you look at someone like LeBron James, who, you know, that's one of my idols, somebody I look up to for a lot of different reasons that, you know, where he came from, he, he didn't have everything, you yeah. know, and what was his driving force? You know, he wanted to have something, a legacy for his family and for his mom at the time, you know? And it's sometimes just that simple. You yeah. know, we just want to buy a house for our mom. Yeah, That's it. Or we want to take care of our family. That's it. It's a hard thing to accomplish, but it's a, it's a mindset that comes easy when you're without. Yeah. And you notice sacrifice from people that care about you and put you in those positions. Um, but there's some connectivity to that where, a lot of our, our really talented leaders in their respective fields, acting, music, um, athletes, they come from backgrounds that are like that. Yeah. And because that's universally, everybody can connect to that. You know, everybody's been in situations where they've been, well, I, I wouldn't say everybody, but if you've ever wanted something that seems unreachable, like you have to be able to dream. And, and sometimes in, in certain situations, when I was younger, that's the only thing we had is to dream, you know? Right. Now, this next section of the program is sponsored by Verizon. Verizon has partnered up with Oi Health to offer discounts and savings on telehealth services in tu idioma for customers and their families. And as you guys know, health, not just physical health, but mental health is so, so important. So for this next question, Rome, I want to highlight mental health in Nuestra comunidad, what are you currently doing to take care of your mental health? Um, I think as as I got you know deeper into my career, there is there's certain aspects of it that are inevitable. You know, I'm I'm in a field of entertainment, you know, and that means whatever I put out to the world is for the world to see. And so when you are in that position, you're susceptible for people to judge every move that you make and for me it, it, it's just about trying to to make sure i maintain a balance because i could get very obsessive about work and very obsessive about success mm. i can't sleep like you know it's always planned and it's never really celebrating the moment and that's something that you know my team always tries to you know have me do is to celebrate the wins you know is this what it's about it's like you go through so much to get to where you are in these situations. And for me, it's like I find myself, the moment I accomplish something, it's very, very short lived. You know, right after that, I'm, I'm already thinking about what I need to do next, you know, and, and the moment's already passed. And now I'm, now I'm on this pursuit and it's a sense of urgency. And there's, there's no moment of realization. There's no moment to smell the flowers because um, they're behind me now and I'm yeah. trying to chase what's next. Yep. So. For me, I, I'm trying to maintain a healthy balance of, you know, relationships in my life, you know, and also a healthy balance with, with work, you know, because I think I'm not my job, but sometimes it could feel like that, you know, right. and especially with 
you know, the magnifying glass that you could live under with someone, even people who are in bigger positions than me, you know, they, they, it comes with different pressures, you know, where it's easy to put your first record out. It's always harder to put the next one out mm. because the expectation and everything that comes along with that. So I just try to rem remain gar uh, grounded, you know, and, and the people around me love me for me and know me personally. Um, and, and just focus on what is it I'm trying to, to accomplish in life, like what I want to leave behind. And sometimes these goals can feel very heavy because they can feel bigger than you. That's what it feels like, you know, sometimes when you, you come from a background or you're one person then in your family that is in a position to make change. Yeah. Um, that pressure could feel heavy. Like the idea of maintaining a healthy, you know, relationship with someone kind of feels non-existent it doesn't feel as important because you say you know i'm on a mission i could be i could set my family up well after i'm gone you know i could leave a legacy behind that could you know for generations and and sometimes it feels like that's a necessary sacrifice but you know i'm trying to maintain a balance where i can have both you know so that i don't yeah. have to feel like i have no real personal life i'm just working you know yeah I'm sure basketball is also like a way of, of taking care of your For mental sure. health, right? Yeah. Like definitely. therapy? I hope. Yeah, I need to. Like, if I had to do a job where they said no no physical activity, I, I would say no, probably. Yeah. I need to have that. Like, it's like, uh, you know, it's like my sanctuary. I don't even have to think when I'm hooping. Like, yeah, it right. It comes second nature. Yeah, for sure. So I want to talk about uh, growing up, you know, Afro-Latino, Afro-Cubano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what, is that, what does that mean to you? Well, I mean, for me, you know, my, my dad is, is Cuban and Irish and my mom is black. So, you know, my dad was, wasn't around in my life a lot and his, his mom was Cuban, uh, but you know, she passed when I was super young. You know, I didn't really get to know about her origin or, or find out, you know I, know, I know certain things about how she got here, you yeah. know, but I, I didn't get to talk to her about that stuff, or at least when I was young enough, I didn't. I didn't care to ask. I was yeah. so so little. But, you know, as I became older and, and more knowledgeable about kind of my culture and my history, like, it's been something very adamant that I felt the need to make sure I represent. Um, because there's Afro-Latinos Afro out there that are just like me who who didn't grow up in a, in a Hispanic household. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, for me, I grew up, my mom, you know, she spoke Spanish, but it wasn't the same. You know yeah. what I mean? And so... I want to make sure I represent that that aspect of it too, because we we do exist, um, and and that's super important to me to make sure I'm I'm as an artist or whatever platform I'm using to let everybody know that, you know I'm Afro-Cuban. Yes, yeah. they need to see that. They need to see us sure. in other roles, you know, and and hopefully at some point, I can be in a position where it won't be such an anomaly, you know, to have someone like me play a character that feels a bit out of range, you know, or play a character that, oh, they normally would give that to, to a white actor. Like, I, I, eventually there'll be a time where that's not even a conversation. Like, yeah. We won't have a lot of these situations where they'll be the first, like being the first at something, you know? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to representation, I know you're big on that. Yeah. I know that that means something to you. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up, in, in Los Angeles, you know, you think about entertainment. And now, when I was a kid, I never thought about, like, L.A. being the capital, the entertainment capital of the world, right? Yeah, like, right. But I would I would watch television, and I, I was a big MTV fan. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to be, you know, a host on MTV, like Carson <laughs> Daly and, yeah, for sure. and Lala, you know, and, and uh, I, would, I would watch them. And, and, you know, Lala, like, representation, you know, it matters. Like, I'm like, yeah. oh, that's dope. And... You know, she could do it. Like, I could do it. I could see myself on there. Like, fast forward, I ended up being a, a host at MTV. And okay. um, things like that matter, man. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I found out you were uh, on, on my girl Becky's, uh, Becky yeah. G's show. And I was like, oh, dope. He's like, he's Latino, like Afro-Latino. That's, yeah. that's, that's super dope, man. Um, when when you talk about your, your Latinidad, right? Like, mm -hmm. is, and, and people find out... Um, do you, what kind of response do you get? I'm sure it's a great one. I mean, I think in the lens of America, um, people will see me just as black. Yeah. And, and a lot of times that, that's generally how things are divided. You yeah. know? 
it's funny because I, I feel like a lot of people think that even in Cuba, like people aren't dark. Like there's dark people darker than me who yeah. are Cubans there. Um, even Dominicans, mm -hmm. dark. You know what I mean? And so you have to remind people because sometimes they'll they'll have ignorance that they don't even know they have. Yep. And so it, it's less about like people's reaction to that. It's just about making sure people know. Like, yeah. I feel like I, I met someone a long time ago and she was just so afraid for people to know that she was also Latin. I was just like, man, you got to embrace that. That shit hurt me to hear. Yeah. You know, but I kind of understand because if you don't connect with that side of your, your, your heritage, it could feel foreign to you. It could feel disingenuous, mm. you know? So for me, I made sure that I was around people, you know, that knew about these things and I wanted to learn more about it myself. Are you learning so about that, it more? Yeah, I yeah. Am, yeah, yeah, I am. You know, um, uh, Gloria Callet, Calderon Callet. Yeah. You know, she's the the writer and creator of With Love, which is on Amazon right now. Um, and she was adamant about, I'm about, I'm about to introduce you to all of these Cuban foods. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Like, teach me. You know, I want to I wanna know more. I want to help people understand more about the culture because they need to. Yeah. You know, and, and so I think, and that show is great for that reason, too, because it shows, you know, the, the traditions that, that happened in a in Hispanic household, you know, and people didn't even know about the simplest things that you know that Hispanics do around tradition, around Christmas time or um, around you know uh, Dia de los Muertos. You know these yep. things they don't even know about these things. You know, so yeah. to be on a platform like Amazon to have an episode just solely about that, you know, people were like, "Wow, where are their faces painted? They don't even know what's going on." <laughs> Rural America is just kind of confused, but. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always trying to further my knowledge more about not even just myself, but other heritages too. I'm trying to be, you know, more worldly. I want, I want to understand, because this is what I do for a living. Right. You know, I'm, I'm myself when I'm not at work, but I'm someone else a lot of, a lot of times out of the day. Yeah. And it's, you, you could either just approach that by knowing words or being prepared by a script, but I, I kind of lean into my own intuition i lean into my knowledge about things or my experience when i'm doing roles and when i'm approaching to do something so whatever it is you know i'm trying i'm trying to understand it you know and i want to do more of that i want to travel more whenever i get the opportunity but it feels like all i do is is work i mean i can have opportunity to do it but i just get bad fomo man yeah and i went to spain for like three days literally only three days because i was like i gotta get back Yo, man, what part you know what of Spain? What part of Spain? Um, I I uh, flew into uh, Barcelona, and then I went into a small island. What's the name of it? Um, it it's escaping me right now. Yeah, but you were in Barcelona. Were you in Barcelona for, for? I didn't get to spend a lot of time there. I ended up having to fly there, and then spend a little time, and then I went to the island. I went to. I can't remember the name of it. Damn. Was it work or was it a little bit of? No, it wasn't work though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, but you were in and out. And three out. days, three days is, is Well, quick. I had a small window because I had to, like, I'm shooting two shows right now. And I just knew, I was like, man, I got a couple couple of days. And a friend was like, I'm going. So I just ended up going with them. And so I'm like, man, let me let me just try to get away for a couple of days. But then I just couldn't wait to get back. I was like, I need to get back. I know what's going on, my schedule. Yeah. You know. Have you been to, to Cuba? I haven't been. No. Oh man, I haven't been either, but I heard it's beautiful, man. It's yeah. quite the no, it is for sure. the 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 country to to visit, man. Have you been to Mexico? I actually I played basketball in Mexico when I first got to LA. That was the only time I ever went. What part was it? Like Mexico City or where? where it you... was so long ago, honestly. Um, oh, you definitely got to go back, man. Oh yeah, no, go I back. definitely want and to. And go and and don't just go into like. Cancun. No, it wasn't like, none of those places. You got to you got to nah. do it like was, it was a real it this I had a tournament out there and I it was all locals. It wasn't it was rarely like any like the touristy. Tourist it wasn't yeah, even yeah. a tourist attraction. It had nothing there. Yeah. It was like dirt roads, man. It wasn't like <laughs> yeah, 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 You know yeah. what I mean? It, it wasn't even a lot of tourist people there. Yeah. Yeah, man. But I want to go back though. Yeah, Mexico's yeah, beautiful. I, I rode horses on the beach. It was fun. Wow. Yeah. I, you see, I, 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 I don't know how to ride horses. Yeah, I didn't either. But, yeah. you know. <laughs> Do you know how to ride horses, friend? Negative? Wait. Oh, oh, you could. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
What? They do it like that, that in Brownsville? Crazy. I mean, I don't know, but I just... You just... Hey, dude, I went to uh, Rosarito. Yeah. Got on the horse like that. Dude. Got on the camel in, in Jordan. Mm. Fred, the Fred, uh, Fred is very worldly. He, he's... <laughs> He's uh, he grew up in Texas, but he uh, he served, and uh, he was in the military, and uh, yeah, man, were you riding camels out there? In, in the... Yeah, you were. Oh, okay. In Jordan, yeah, yeah. that's like form of transportation, and you had yeah, to, huh? Exactly. That was dope. That was that, that was their high. So it was like when they get up. You know, oh, you got to lean back, right? You got to lean back when they mm-hmm. when the camels get up. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of of worldly, I know you you've been wanting to go to Brazil. Have you I've made it out? No, I haven't gone to Brazil. I got a lot oh, of things yeah. there, though. I definitely want to go. Um, yeah. I just don't know. I think there's a lot of stuff happening right there, there right now, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when things calm down, I definitely want to make a trip out there. Yeah, man. I went to Brazil during the World Cup, the, uh, 20, 2014. Okay. It was, it was, it was amazing, man. Uh, yeah, Brazil. I got to say, you know, I, got, I have fans from a lot of different areas of the world, um, but Brazilian fans, man, they... When they like you, man, they they're very loyal. Yeah, they're very loyal fans, and they support whatever it is you're doing. It's 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 super dope to see. I had no idea or reason to why, but you know, once you become popular there, like they got your back forever. So yeah, shout out to the Brazilian fans for sure. Yeah, man. Uh, I want to talk about how when I first saw you on on. The screen, it was on how to get away with murder. Okay. Congrats on, on, on that, man, the success of that. Thank you. Um, and then I then I start, saw you, you know, continuing to hustle. You're you're now on Raising Dion. Yeah. And and man, congrats on that as well, man. How, how how was uh shooting Raising Dion? It was dope. Very special project, man. I think um I've really pivoted myself after I did I did it. Two and a half years on uh, The Bold and the Beautiful, which is where I, I won the Emmy that I won for Best Younger Actor in the Drama Series. Uh, first, actually, um, Latin person to, to win that award. Uh, let them know, man. Let them yeah, know. Let them know. Y'all got to know that because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it sucks. It's like the first. is like this, I won that in 2018, 2019. It's like, man, yeah, can't believe it. Like, really? Me? You know, but anyway, I did that show. And from there... I got on to how I get away with murder. Uh, but while I was there, there was an actor, um, his name was Christoph, and he passed away. He was on The Young and the Restless. And I always see him in the hallways. And he pulled me aside and he was like, you know, I don't know you young man, but uh, I just wanted you to know like, whatever it is you're doing here, just know it's not just for you. You know, you represent something much bigger. And that was the first time I had ever thought about it that way. Like, I guess up until that point, I was just, doing the work yeah and I didn't know the impact of what it meant and so once he told that to me it really changed my perspective you know from that point on I really only did jobs where I felt there was purpose behind them um that meant something uh and, and it doesn't have to be you know a huge purpose like uh, the purpose could just simply being the, the lead being a person of color or the storyline being you know pivoted around you know people of color, but not from a a position of trauma. You know, I've seen a lot of stories being told that way. Uh, I've just been very fortunate because I made that decision to do work that I feel is is impactful, you know, that I've had the opportunity to be on How to Get Away with Murder, which is a trailblazing show. You know, working with Viola Davis and Billy Brown and um, Lynn Terman, these are just, you know, the the lead, well, she was the lead of the show, but they're all phenomenal, you know, and, and, being on a show like that, I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to top this. You know? Yeah, yeah. And she had done amazing work on that show. And I learned so much as an actor being there, working with her and working with the cast there. Uh, so after that point, it was just about, man, what do I do next? You know, and I had some films and I started doing a couple other things. But uh, Raising Dion had came about. And essentially, they, they were trying to film the show a year prior, which is I wasn't even in conversation for wasn't even available and because of COVID things got pushed and I saw it and I was like man I love this show when I watched it on the first season and I always make little mental notes and even physical notes about shows that I would love to be on if I have opportunity to and that was definitely one of the shows I wanted to be on 
uh, that I write, you know, I write down in my notebook about stuff I want to do. And to be on that show was great. You know, they, they, it's led by, you know, a, a little black boy who's super talented and uh, Josiah Young, he's my guy. You know, I had worked with kids before, but it's just a different ball game. We work with them, you know, over a long period of time. Yeah. Uh, but it was a lot of fun, you know, and, and I got to really live out another dream, which is to be kind of like a superhero, to be kind of like a, a guy that I had never seen really growing up until maybe Black Panther and, um, you know, that kind of thing. So when, yeah. I, when I went and did the show, it was just like, this is going to mean a lot to a lot of people. And the same thing I told him. You know, I, I sat him down. I don't know, you probably don't remember it. But I told him, like, man, you realize this show is it's, it's a great show, but, you know, you have a, a great responsibility, man. Like, you're going to inspire a lot of kids. For sure. You know, and he was just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I know. And so I knew he had it at that point, you know. But I, I always try to make sure I had those conversations if, with, with someone, if they're a younger actor or something like that. Yeah. Listen, this... um. This journal that, yeah. that you write in, a lot of the things are, are, are coming to fruition. Do you think you can write a few things about me in there? I got you. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll text you what, what I, what hey, I want to happen. Something happens crazy. You're like, <laughs> yo, did you do this? Like, <laughs> this is so out of the norm. Like, I wouldn't have it without you. Yeah. That's a magical journal right there, man. Yeah. I mean, journal is just a, I, I could write it on, on a napkin. It don't matter. I just need to physically give it life by doing that. Yeah, you know. So the journal is whatever, but it's just the intent. You know, when you is this something about the intending and also putting action to it? That's you. Ha, you need that, and also when you're manifesting. Like I'm not even a crazy manifester type person, but you can't expect result without putting act putting action behind it. For sure. And I think a lot of times people spend a lot of time just meditating and manifesting, and they don't spend a lot of time with. Yeah. acting you know putting action behind it and so yeah. part of that process for me is writing it down like i even, even though you don't need to you could type it in your phone but i need to write it down i need to physically create that you know with my hands yeah for it to materialize so i have the script idea a script yeah oh, okay it's about a guy who has a journal okay it's his magical journal and he writes that's no that's not you know <laughs> no, that's no. All right. and he writes stuff down and, and and these things just start happening to him. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at right okay. now. Yeah, yeah. Sound like a biography. But, yeah. Uh, we'll see if. But we could we could work we could work on it. to play me, man. Uh, <laughs> think about it. That, there's something there. I think there's yeah, something I think there. Something special. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, earlier we we're talking about uh, you know how you play with Kyrie and yeah and um, you know uh, 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 other professional mm -hmm. um, basketball players. Before we even recorded too, we talked about LeBron. Yeah, Bron. And uh oh Bron. Sorry. Oh Bron, yeah, man. That's Bron. <laughs> so you That's you're you're currently in in the process of of working with with Bron. Yeah. Well, yeah, his production company. Yeah. So working on the film, I think, next month. Um, I can't really say the name of yeah. it yet. Maybe when this comes out, people already know about it. But um I'm excited, man. I think whatever he touches turns to gold, man. Yeah. I think he's just been the ultimate professional. You know, and the way he conducts his family, the way he conducts his business, he brings his friends up. I mean, he's just, he represents a lot of things that I idolize. Yeah. Um, not even just his ability to play basketball, because a lot of people can play basketball. Right. You know, but not a lot of people can maintain a healthy family, maintain a healthy business ventures, um, as I feel like he has. And I, I don't know if anybody else has done it as well as he has. Like, not even Mike. You know, even though Mike has a huge... Uh, Michael Jordan has a huge, yeah. you know, Jordan brand. I mean, we got Jordans on right now, both yep. of us. But, you know, LeBron, I just feel like he's exceeded that. He's exceeded expectation, like, just beyond. So so for me, I'm like, yeah, anything Bron is related to, hey, sign me up. Yeah. You know, I know it's going to do well. I know it's going to be well done. Congrats on, on that yeah. as well, man. That's that's big. And Bron just scored uh, over 50 points. So at, 56, man. At 37. This dude is insane, man. But he puts a lot of work in in the off season. Yep. You know, and and that's what something I identify with. Like, you don't you don't get the results that he's getting without that. You know, and I'm sure it's been hard on his life, on his family. You know, he's been doing it for 20 yeah. years. Yeah. You know, been a professional for 20 years, but at the highest stage, it's just one of those things where you can't even really understand what that is like. You yeah. know, how many games he's probably missed of his sons, and you know, so many moments and stuff that he had to sacrifice to right. be where he is. So. 
people think it's about championships. It's like, it's about legacy, man. It's about when he's done, we'll have the same, you know, last dance that we have for Mike. But we'll really get to sit back and marvel at what he's been able to accomplish. I think it's just hard to look at it while it's happening currently. Right. We're talking about him being a great while he's still doing this. Like, let him finish first. Like, yeah. let's just get some time. Like, I know this year has been crazy for him, crazy for the Lakers in, you know, in general. But yeah. let's just, let's relax, you know. Let's just uh, appreciate what we're witnessing right now. And you don't even have to be a super huge Brian fan to do that. Like, right. you just right. have to be a fan of excellence. And if you are, there ain't no denying that. <laughs> you, you can't get around that, what he's yeah. been able to do this year. 100%. Are you a Lakers fan or a, a, I mean, a Chicago I'm, I'm Bulls a, fan? I mean, uh, I'm more of a player. Like, I'm fans of, of different players. Like, I ain't okay. really a team kind of person. Um, but I do like the Lakers. I like, you know, Melo's on there, one of my other favorite yeah, players. Yeah, Melo, yeah. Um, you know, Kobe was one of my favorite players, yeah. too. So that that's also why I really love the Lakers. But, uh, I mean, I'm a fan of a, a bunch of guys, you know, that are in the league right now that I'm paying attention to. Luka, another one of my favorites to watch. Um, let me think. John Morant, you know. He's he's a he's box office man. He's the main attraction in the league right now. It's crazy to think about because I don't think from where people saw him initially they would think he would be where he is now, and he just plays with a chip on his shoulder. I think he's always played like that. Yeah, yeah. He came from a smaller market school, man. You know, he, he went to um, it's, it's escaping me, but the the school he went to wasn't a huge D one school. It's not yeah. like he was super sought after, so he really had to grind and get in, get where he is now, and so. I just respect him, man. He's, he's relentless. He's killing he's a, he's it. He's a dog, man. He's a beast, you know. And you can't do nothing about it, man. He's, it's he like just, every game. There's like he has a highlight reel. He's box office, man. You want, you don't want to miss it. Like it's crazy. A couple of years ago, you probably couldn't even tell me who played on the Memphis Grizzlies like two years ago, three years ago. I wouldn't know. Now I know like four of those guys on there just because I watched him when he played. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so yeah. yeah, I think he's he's definitely one of those yeah. guys. That, I'm I'm hoping that in a, in a few years he comes to L.A. That's can you write that in your journal? <laughs> we'll see. I'm running out of space in this journal, man. <laughs> um, we'll see. You know, I, I think he'll. I think he'll stay in Memphis, man. They love him over there. Yeah, and this culture there, Memphis is a great place. Yeah, you mentioned Kobe. Um, I was gonna save this till the end of 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 our of our conversation here today, mm -hmm. but you know, I've I had the the opportunity. Um, you know, I was very blessed and lucky to to have some conversations. Oh, you did uh, with, with Kobe and. Uh, I was going to tell you that speaking to you today reminds me of of it, Kobe's uh, way of of speaking. Kobe was very eloquent, you yeah. know. Kobe was very professional and but still very approachable. And man, and and nice that's person. what I was going to share with you, man. Thank you. I'll tell you that's a huge compliment. I don't yeah. know if I deserve it, but I got to see Kobe play once. I remember he was at the free throw line, and I was in some nosebleeds, honestly. <laughs> and I walked all the way down because he got fouled. It took him a minute to get to the line. And I was waiting for that to happen because I knew once he got fouled, I was like, I'm going right down there. So I walked down the stance and I walked behind the basket as he was shooting the free throws. And I just took my time, like, just watching him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I walk, it took me forever to get across that, you know, across the court. But I got, that was like the closest I had been to him at that point. Security, security was like, all right, man, you got to. It was ushering me. <laughs> you got to keep it was, moving. You know, those guys don't even get to watch the game. They literally they face the crowd. And so I'm just walking real slow, like looking at him, do his warm up. You know, he's bouncing the ball. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Yeah. I'm like, I could run out there right now and block it. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me not do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm having those That's thoughts real. like, nah, let me Yeah. You mentioned Kobe. We mentioned yeah. LeBron. Both big family men. Yes. Uh, you're a father yeah. yourself. Uh -huh. um, what has fatherhood taught you? Man, it's taught me a lot. You know, it taught, it taught me to, it gave me some balance also, perspective. Um, I think early in my career, I mean, when my daughter came about, like, I hadn't even been on a set yet, you know. Wow. So I was at that point where I was like, I didn't know what the hell to do. You know, I didn't have. I didn't have any money. I didn't have anything of my own. So I was like, man, I got like nine months to really pull it together. <laughs> and, you know, her mom is somebody I'm still cool with. And and we still have a good relationship, me and her. That's great. And I'm just lucky I've, I've been able to have someone like her be her mom because she was just really understanding of what I've been trying to accomplish. Yeah. Um, 
you know, things had to had to even out and we had to figure out a lot of different things. But, you know, she's a really great mom to her. And so I talk to her every day. You yeah. Know? But now, you know, she's seen Raising Dion, so I finally got to do something she can watch. Yeah. Because <laughs> normally she can't watch. She, I'm not going to let her watch How I Get Away or yeah. <laughs> some of the other stuff that I do. It's normally like drama stuff. So, you know, even my nephews and nieces, man, they, they think I'm cool now. Yeah. So, that's it. That's the only reason I want to do the show. I'm like, <laughs> I want to make sure, they can, you know, my, my niece and nephews, they're going to watch this. They call me now, but they always expect me to have powers. And I just don't. <laughs> you know, it just, they want to FaceTime you. Like, yeah, they yeah. FaceTime me. Come like, on, do a trick. Like, uncle, can you, uh, can you do the force field? And I'm just like, like, yeah, give me a second. You know, I'm like, I don't want to tell them I don't really have it. You know, yeah. like, oh, you fake. You already got it. <laughs> You know, uh, but yeah, they'll be the been, first ones to time. humble you, Ray. Like, ah, yeah. you're, 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 kids, I'm telling you, they got yeah. no filter. Yeah. You want to know an opinion about anything? Go ask a kid. Like, you like what I'm wearing? Nah, they'll tell you straight <laughs> yeah. up. No, your hair? Don't love it. Like, yeah. Damn, like you can't, you can't get anything past a kid. You know? No, man, that's that's amazing. So, uh, <laughs> before I I let you go today, yeah. I have a uh, rapid fire with Rome. All right, let's get it. Favorite Spanish word. Ya tu sabes. Ya tu sabes. I'll take, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Ya tu sabes. So. That's the phrase. The, I gotta <laughs> it's have like a, it. It's a phrase. It's, it's a hashtag now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it. Ya tu sabes. Yeah. <laughs> Salsa or merengue? Salsa. Favorite piece of tech that you're using right now? Um, that's a good question. Other than my phone? Um, it could be your phone. Yeah, that's like it's easy. That's too easy. Um, um, damn. Let me think about that one. I don't want to say my phone. Everybody has a phone, right? Oh, um, I use. I have an Alexa. Dope. I use that. I use that pretty often, actually. It's, I'm like Alexa, play this. She tries to play it, but sometimes, it's like, damn, I just need to type it in because sometimes she <laughs> yeah, don't understand yeah, yeah. what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, I'll say that my Alexa. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't have a, an Alexa. I have a, a Siri, right? Because of the iPhone. Yeah. And like, I'm always trying to play Spanish music, and I'm like, "Hey Siri, play, you know, Bad Bunny, Yo Perro Sola," and it's like, yeah. "No, playing Bad Bunny." Yeah. Some, and it plays a whole different yeah. song. Cause like, come on, some totally come different. on, Siri. Yeah. Get your get your Spanish on 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 point I'm here. I'm yelling at this thing. <laughs> you know, play. Yeah. You know what? I do it my damn self. Yeah, yeah, right. Best song to play at a party. Um uh, it's a lot of them. Um You get the think. ox chord at a party. It's your turn Depends to play that party. one song. Depends on who's there. Uh um, You're it's your party. You got your friends there. Okay. I actually never been given an ox chord in my life. <laughs> All right, you, <laughs> you, no get, the, you get the Bluetooth given, connection. Yeah, you no know, one's ever given me that. Who has an ox chord now? <laughs> right, right. Ox chord. <laughs> Man, Apple didn't change the input and everything. You can't even use those chords right, anymore. Right, right, right. Um, I don't know. I feel like if you had a, like a huge group of people, um, my people probably like swag surf. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that people who listen to that, they just can't help but to do the what the song is. To, yeah, exactly. You can't help it. <laughs> yeah. Greatest rapper of all time. Greatest rapper of all time. It's tough. Because I think those things are different. Greatest rapper. Greatest artist that's rapper. I'm gonna have to say um J. Cole. J. Cole. J. Cole. Although he ain't my favorite artist, I would say he's up there though. He's like probably like my he's definitely in my top five for sure. Best singer of all time. Hmm. I know this one is special because you sing. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I, I feel like Beyonce is up there, man. Mm. Like, she just sings with emotion. She she I feel like ever since she started, like I feel everything she's singing. I believe. I believe everything she's singing. See, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 a toss up between a couple, but I would say probably Beyonce's voice is one of the one of the ones I think about most. If you ask me that question, can't go wrong with Beyonce. Yeah. In in any, 
If I asked you what your 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 favorite hobby was and you said Beyonce, that would make yeah. sense too. Beyonce, I could Beyonce, probably answer you could the rest be, yeah, of these by right, saying right. Beyonce. Beyonce. Right. You'd be you'd be straight. Yeah, and it would be completely fine. You'd be I, good. I uh speaking of singing, real quick, yeah. I'm gonna pause the rapid fire. Your your music, man. You're yeah. you're 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 big when it comes to music and, and singing. And uh yeah. I, I heard one of your songs uh on on recently um on your social media. It yeah. was like an R and B type of vibe. Yeah, is that yeah, I do R and B? Yeah, is is that what you you plan to to do more of, or do you see yourself, you know, jumping into other genres? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm really not keeping it in any kind of box. I, I mean, I love R and B music though, um, but I'm I'm open. You know, I, I'll it's besides country, that's one of those things that's hard for me to to sing because. I do feel like people who sing country music, they sing from a place of experience and hurt too. It's different. Like I feel like country is kind of misunderstood that way. It's one of those genres where it's not like as popular as some of the other genres, but I definitely feel like you can listen to a country record and feel it, you know? Um, so I wouldn't say I would do a country record, but I definitely could do a pop record, you know, do a Latin record. Most definitely um, R&B is probably generally where my lane is though. Yeah. Do a Latin, uh, like a, a reggaeton Something vibe like would be dope, yeah. man. It would be, it would be dope. Do you listen to to any uh, Latino artists? Um, I mean, a few. Like, like you say, Bad Bunny. Um, let me think. I like. What's that one artist? I'm trying. I'm, I'm not trying to name like super mainstream, like Prince Royce and like these guys. Like, tell me some of your favorites. Let me see if I know them. I like uh, I like Jay Balvin. Oh yeah, he's um, dope. I like Carol G, Becky G. Becky G's dope. Yeah. Um, I listen to, of course, Bad Bunny. I listen to um, Romeo Santos. Romeo Santos, yeah. yeah. Aventura. Um, you know, uh, you just said um, uh, Prince Royce. Prince yeah. Royce is dope. Uh, you you were uh, you're the love interest in. In in your movie in your in your, my show, your yeah. show, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I met him. Is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, that's Prince Royce's partner, right? Yeah, yeah. Emma Rod was um, was did he, was he ever on set or anything like that? Did you get to? Nah, to it's hard. We don't really we don't get to really have people on set no more, man. Yeah, because of COVID restrictions. But he did pull up to the premiere. Oh, dope. Yeah, it's cool. Talk to him for a little bit. Dope, dope. It's dope. always it's always it's always weird in those situations, just because you know. That's kind of my genre. Like I'm always someone's love interest, and so when I when I meet their partners, it's always like, "Hey, I'm kissing your wife." What's up, man? Yeah. Like, listen, bro, it's just TV, you know. But it's always respect, you know. It's, it's always like, you know, I just know if it was me, I wouldn't be able to hold myself from making it a thing, you know. I'd be like, "So you know, you're the guy, huh?" Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. I, okay. Yeah. It's it's fun though. I mean. It's it's the imitation of life. We need that, right? You know, it's it's love is it's one of the main focal points of our existence. So it's just I happen to be doing a lot of those kind of things. That's that's hilarious, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You and the whole time you're having a conversation <laughs> with 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 him, you're just just a, just eye contact with him, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. can imagine it's kind of it's like, oh yeah, it's. <laughs> that, that yeah, it's if, if, it's it's. I mean, it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. You know. Um, it, everybody feels that way until they're in that position. I feel like a lot of people don't have to be in that position where they have to see their wife or significant other. And have you been in that position? Um, nah, I wouldn't say I have actually. I've always been on the other end. I've always had to <laughs> meet somebody else's significant other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, you have the the bachata vibe too, man. You got the bachata swag, something like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can see you doing a. Drop in a bachata album, something like that. Maybe. Hey, am I have to write in a book. Let's see. You I know, Akon, Akon wrote, wrote in and produced, sang a bachata album. Did you know that? No, nah. dude. Akon's he, a he, fascinating a guy, man. Akon went off on that too. I was like, yo, Akon, Akon did it right. You know, from from uh, bartender to locked up to all these amazing I mean, he, songs that he he's wrote. So, he's a huge humanitarian too, though. Oh man, you know, and and so people don't really know that, which is cool. Like I think a lot of times, celebrity, it, it, sometimes it's a photo op. They want people to know about everything. And I just love when people discover something you did. Like I've been did that, 
you know, or you, you like for him, I think he he created sources of power like yep. where he was from. Yep. Like, who the hell does that? It's crazy. That's, that's you know? crazy. Yeah, but check out his bachata album. <laughs> He's saving the world, but check out his bachata, bachata album, album too. Is yeah, I got you. I'm, I'm gonna mess with it. All right, back into the rapid fire. Last question: What is a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? Uh, let me think. I know one already. I'm trying to think of something else. <laughs> um, my mom used to call me a name when I was a kid. She still does sometimes. She hasn't called me in a while, but I feel like when I say this, she's going to start calling me it again. Um, I don't know where she got this name from, but she used to call me Doula Bug. What is it? Doula Bug. D-U-L-A. Doula Bug. Doula Bug. I don't know why. Doula Bug. Yeah. No idea. So you have to tell me where that name came from, but she just made it up. She's been calling me that forever. That's, that, I feel like that has so much love behind it. Yeah. It it does bug. until you get called it, until you get called into the room for something else, you know. And she's probably and not calling you doula bug at is, that point. Is is you're like damn? I don't <laughs> hear that, you know. Well, um, doula bug, I appreciate you <laughs> coming through, man. <laughs> appreciate it uh, for real, man. Uh, it's it's nothing but love here, yeah. and I know you're gonna continue killing it in in ev- anything and everything that you do, man. It mm-hmm. feels like. You know everything that that you you touch uh becomes gold man and and you know i know hey, that you're going to continue doing that man much love and, and much success finished. continue success to you man definitely thank you for having me i think that you got something special here man super cool i haven't done a lot of these kind of things but um i say keep going bro thank you brother next Appreciate year you're gonna look back on this space and be like damn i can't believe we was there look where we at now yeah yeah and then you'll be like yo wrong link get that book like man dog <laughs> I can't do it. I already wrote too much. Like, listen, I wrote this. This whole page is you, man. We're gonna have to add more pages to that, man. We're gonna have <laughs> yeah. to add more pages to that. Yeah. Rome Flynn, thank you so much, and thank you so much for watching Mondo and Friends, presented by Verizon.